ordering online is easy. Just point your phone at the QR code, tap on the notification. Once you're on the menu, you can scroll through and see the most popular items, see categories at the top, and then you can find something you like. You can also look by category, and you can have subcategories of, say, salads. However, I don't have that set up. All salads, as you jump to salads, you can also search for burger. Uh, Fontina burger, that sounds good. And then you can add modifiers. So for toppings, I'll add tomato, but I don't want sauteed onions, I want regular onions. I can choose barbecue sauce. And then for my little bit of coleslaw, eh, I don't feel like coleslaw. I'd rather have some garlic toast. And then a side, and how about rice pilaf, but not french fries. And as you can see, one is required for mini side, and one is required for side. You can have multiple be required or none be required. See, on condiments, none is required. They're optional. But on burger toppings, two are required, and they're each 50 cents. And you can pre-select, as you saw when I initially came here. Once I've made all my selections, I tap Add to Order here at the bottom, and it adds it to the cart, like an e-commerce site. Okay, I don't want a burger. I just want to scroll through and, you well, know, carnivore delights. That sounds good. Let's get a ribeye steak. That sounds good. I'll have it with some creamy herb dip. That sounds interesting. It comes with too many sides, but uh, uh, let's get some french fries. My temperature, make sure it's cooked right. I'll have it medium rare. As you can see here, too many sides are required. No condiments are required. Temperatures required. Steak extras are required. Ooh, I want some zesty barbecue. And one side is required. And I want a loaded baked potato, not just a baked potato. And then I'll add that to my order. Once I'm done, I tap view order to check out. I look through, make sure everything's right. If I didn't get anything right, I can tap remove right there. I can also change the quantity. And then I have the default tip, which most people won't change, but they can. You can change it to 20% or a custom amount. For testing purposes, I do a custom amount of $0. And then I add a coupon code, which is testing only. Done, and apply. And you can create any coupon codes and have them expire. So you can create a coupon code just for a season or a month or a week or an item category, anything you want. Once I have everything applied the way I want, I tap checkout. Now, if my total wasn't zero, here I would tap Google Pay, Apple Pay, I enter my contact info, and I could pay with entering a credit card or cash app. And if I want, I can switch this on to receive offers and newsletters and things via text. But since I have a zero total, I'll just enter my contact info. Now I've skipped the entering of the information because of the suggestions and for my own privacy. And then here at the bottom, I can also apply a gift card if I've purchased one. But my total is zero, so I'll just tap place order. And then once it processes, I can add it to my home screen if I'd like as an app icon. So there's no need to have a separate app like other point of sales have. You just add it to the home screen as a website. So it shows me everything that I've ordered. And then once the order is ready, if you have it set up correctly, which I will do for you, then you can send text alerts when the order is ready, send progress updates, and then you can just bring it out to them when the, it's ready. Now let's switch over to the point of sale and see how it shows up. So Mike C just placed an order. So let's see what that looks like. Tap one new order and you can see the order. You can see the details of the order. And let's hop over to the kitchen display system to find out more about it. 
from the kitchen display system. It allows you to see all of the orders, all the details of the order. It tells you the name, where they are, self-serve, the table, dining one, table one, and it tells you all about what they ordered. So in the kitchen, as you're making things, you can tap on them to gray them out so that you know that they're completed. And once everything is tapped and completed, then the order disappears and it goes into the completed tab if you need to see it, but most likely you just want to see the open tickets. Now, let's hop over to the expediter view. In the expediter view, you can see the order and you can do much the same things and if needed, you can tap prioritize, which in the kitchen will tell you to make now and it will highlight it. But as the expediter, you're preparing it and putting it in a package and getting it ready to bring to the table. And once it's all packaged and ready and it's taken to the table, you can tap individual items or you can tap the whole order, but I'll tap the last item, which will make it complete and go away and show in the completed tab instead. If you don't want to use the kitchen display system, you can simply have an iPad running the point of sale print out all of the item tickets, and you can change that by category or have it print all items. So what you could do is print certain categories like drinks and alcohol printed to the bar, and then you could have food items printed to the kitchen. Or if you have another drink station and you can split between alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, and you can even split between various items to display on different kitchen displays, or if you're using printers, to print on different printers. So you can organize it very nicely and exactly how you want. Next, I'll cover the normal point of sale system. This is a system that your servers would use. They could carry a tablet around, or they could write the stuff down and then input it into the system at a station. The most efficient way to do this is to have them carry a tablet around or to use self-service ordering. Now, there's two views for this. There's the check view, which you'll see your open checks here, or you can do new check, and you can assign the table service, or you can search for an existing one, or you can add a custom check and name it, or swipe a card to associate it with the card. But what's most likely and what's most efficient is to have a layout of the tables. So what I'll do is tap table service eight right here and then I'll add a steak we'll get the ribeye and then I have to select a temperature medium rare and then as I'm on there or from there by tapping the item and tapping edit I can change the items I can change the modifiers so I can add blue cheese or cheddar cheese or mushrooms any of the items and they all cost extra. But then I can remove those. No white wine, shallot butter. And if they want, say, fries instead of coleslaw, I can do mini french fries. And remove their coleslaw. Or if they want to add a side, then we can do that. I'm going to add, additionally, broccoli medley. Because they also want that. They don't just want the baked potato. I can add condiments from the condiment selection. They want buffalo. And I can add a special note for the kitchen if desired. And save that change. And I have the item. Now I'm going to add pasta. I'll add the chicken penne. Keep it simple. We have the pre-selected mini side of garlic toast. But they would prefer to have coleslaw. Okay, so I'll remove garlic toast, add coleslaw. And you don't have to tap add, that just is an extra indication. So what that would look like is just coleslaw. And if the kitchen is just reading what the system says and isn't memorizing items to make, then that's no problem. But if they're memorizing things, probably want to, you probably want to tap add coleslaw. And then I'll add to check. Now. Let me show you an example of when you can't add the items. So I'm going to get the Harbor Burger, which is a seafood burger. Now, if I remove the pre-selected modifier of coleslaw, it won't let me add it to the check because not everything is completed. 
it's required that I add a side. So I have to add, say, garlic toast. I have to add something. Now, what we can do is set it up differently to operate in the point of sale and have it operate online differently. But the way I have it set up is operating the same either in either case so that you maintain the same pricing for all of the items across the board. And then once everything is completed, it allows me to add to check and then send to the kitchen. And once their order is sent to the kitchen, it displays in the kitchen display system the same way online ordering does, or it prints out receipts according to the categories as set up in the point of sale with the printers, like I described earlier. Once they're ready to check out, I tap on the table, I tap print bill if I want to print their bill, or I can just tap pay immediately, and I can split it between people. I can do cash, card, and if you have your square reader connected, which if I set your system up, you will, you simply swipe, tap, or insert the card, and then it goes to the screen after this. For testing purposes, I do test and record payment, but if you swipe a card, it would jump straight to this screen, and they can get a receipt via email, text message, or it can print on a connected printer, but I'll do no receipt. It asks for their email address, but I'll just say no thanks. And that's the end of your transaction. They're checked out, and their bill has been paid. If you have it set up correctly, then you can assign seat numbers as well to keep track of everything. Not everyone wants that, but many restaurants do, and I'm happy to set that up as well.